Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in life, there are certain ghosts that haunt certain sports. Certain standards for greatness that simply are hard to envision, much less reach right let's name a few such athletes let's talk about their sport then let's talk about one such athlete in boxing right who hovers who haunts the sport to this day on may the 25th 1935 at a big 10 track meet in a span of about 45 minutes an ohio state student jesse owens set three world records and tied another right he actually set the world record in the long jump in the 220 yard dash and in the 200 yard low hurdles he tied the record in the 100 yard dash right in other words in the entire history of track and field up until that point it took jesse owens less than one hour to take down three world records and to tie another, right? Let's move to baseball. The first man in sports history to hit 30 home runs, to hit 40 home runs, and to hit 50 home runs, after he hit his 60th, entered the dugout, looked around the dugout, and said, let's see some son of a bitch beat that. Right? There's only one Babe Ruth. There's only one guy with this level of dominance. Right? It's Babe Ruth. Whatever has happened since then, Hank Aaron, Barry Bonds, Roger Maris, right? You understand that the ghost of Babe Ruth is in the room. You look at his career batting average, you look at his career home runs and slugging percentage, they're simply off the table. In the NFL, you have one quarterback who won four Super Bowls. He won every Super Bowl in which he played. No losses. Did not throw an interception. Right? And that's Joe Montana. Right? As I look at all these other quarterbacks, right? And there's some great quarterbacks out there. There was nobody like this guy, right? It's a different level. Keep in mind, in the Super Bowl against the Bengals, the Niners have to practically go the length of the field. Joe Cool, as they called him then, looks in the stand, says, hey, isn't that John Candy? That's during the last drive. His offensive line calms down. He then proceeds to lead them the length of the field for that game-winning touchdown, right? Let's shift to tennis. Steffi Graf, 22 Grand Slam singles titles. Think about that. In 1988, she wins all four Grand Slam singles titles and then wins the Olympic gold medal. Think about that, right? Walks away from the sport at 30, right? Having won the most titles male or female since the introduction of the open era in 1968 right to call Steffi Graf dominant doesn't do her justice as much as I like Serena Williams Maria Sharapova right as much as I like the powers that be at the top right now there's no one like this right there now let's talk about boxing. One of the beautiful things online are the people who actually enter comments about boxing history in the comment section to boxing videos, right? There's a group of you out there who quietly believe that the man who was born Walker Smith Jr. 
who then took the name of someone else, Ray Robinson, and then turned it into Sugar Ray Robinson. And understand, he didn't give himself the nickname, right? This nickname was bestowed on him by the press, right? The man who was known as Sugar Ray Robinson is such a gold standard in the sport that an argument can be made that Floyd Mayweather's best trainer, right? The man who came up with Floyd, and that's Roger Mayweather, right? Still believes that Sugar Ray Robinson is the best fighter to have ever lived, right? Let me repeat that. They're members of the Mayweather family, members of the Mayweather inner circle who believe that Ray Robinson is the top shelf. Now, let me say this, you know, from time to time, I'm here online and we're talking about the fights that are televised, the fights we have good film on. I've talked here online about Ray Robinson against Rocky Graziano. I've talked about Ray Robinson against Carmine Basilio. I've talked about Ray Robinson against Gene Fulmer. These are all big fights that Ray Robinson had in the 1950s. But, of course, the old-timers here, the boxing hardcore, really the real boxing royalty, long-time boxing fans, have quietly reminded me that the best Ray Robinson is really the Ray Robinson from the 1940s. It's not Ray Robinson at middleweight. It's Ray Robinson at welterweight. Let's talk about the level of dominance. Ray Robinson is 40-0 before he loses to Jake LaMotta, who outweighed him by 16 pounds when they fought. By 1951, Ray Robinson's record was 128 wins, one loss, two draws. Right, 128 wins, one loss, two draws. Right? Ray Robinson decided, after having the welterweight belt for years, from 1946 to 1951, that he would try to win the middleweight title. He won the middleweight title in a matter of months. Right? Understand how great he was. At about 20 years old, he then fought the lightweight champion, Sammy Argan. Understand, excuse me, Anga. Understand that Angad was so afraid of losing his title to this 20-year-old that, believe it or not, the fight was fought at a catch weight, heavier than lightweight, right? This way, the title wouldn't be at stake. Ray Robinson then went out and beat the lightweight champ. Didn't get the title. He was 20 years old, right? In other words, Ray Robinson, whatever you think of Ray Robinson, just understand he beat the lightweight champion. He was the welterweight champion. He was the middleweight champion. He fought for the light heavyweight championship, was winning the fight before the fight got stopped because he was heat exhausted. And understand, the referee was the first person to suffer from heat exhaustion. They had to replace the referee. Then a few rounds later, Ray Robinson suffered from heat exhaustion. Right? But as great as Ray looks in those 1950s films, and understand, Robinson takes a couple years off of the sport. I would argue that when he comes back, he's no longer the same fighter, even though he has some of his best-known fights after that point. Right, but let's talk about a moment in time. It's one of the worst nights of Robinson's boxing career. We all have bad days. Before I do, let me just talk about Floyd Mayweather briefly. Right, understand I'm cherry picking here. I'm picking one of the worst nights of Ray Robinson's career. Let's talk briefly about one of the worst nights of Floyd Mayweather's career. 
The first Jose Luis Castillo fight, I'm telling you, there are a lot of you who believe Floyd lost that fight. Let's talk about some data points. The CompuBox numbers. Would it surprise you to know that Mayweather landed 157 punches that night, according to CompuBox, while Castillo landed 203 punches that night. In other words, Castillo, according to CompuBox, landed 46 more punches than Floyd Mayweather that night. Mayweather, the CompuBox king, landed at a 35% connect ratio. Castillo landed at a 40% connect ratio. The big difference in the fight was the punching power. The power punches landed. The big punches landed. Mayweather landed 66 power punches. 66! He was awarded the victory. Jose Luis Castillo landed 173 power punches. Let me repeat that. 173 power punches. You know HBO's Harold Letterman. Harold Letterman had Castillo winning the fight 115-111. He had Castillo winning that fight by four rounds. Right? The Associated Press had Mayweather winning the fight by four rounds. I encourage you with your own two eyes to revisit that fight. Understand, even great fighters, Rocky Marciano and Roland Lestarza, their first fight. Floyd Mayweather, Jose Luis Castillo, his first fight, have Rocky moments. I can tell you in front of 35,000 people at Wembley Stadium, on June the 18th, 1963, at the end of the fourth round, Henry Cooper decked Muhammad Ali, and Ali was glassy-eyed. His glove may or may not have been torn. I believe, according to some reports, his gloves is torn a little bit. His cornerman, Angelo Dundee, sensing the moment, by his own admission, apparently opened up the, uh, the split glove a little bit more. By the time they got new gloves on Ali, just understand that Ali was able to get back his balance. He ended the fight the very next round. I'm telling you, if you look at a film of that fight, Ali didn't slip. Ali got decked. Ali was close in that fight to being stopped. Now let's return to Sugar Ray Robinson. What I want to do is take you back, visually, to May the 16th, 1947. We're picking a day, a night really, in Ray Robinson's prime, while he is the welterweight champion of the world. Right now, let me say this. I did not know until about 24 hours ago that the tape of his fight against Georgie Abrams was actually here online. For those of you interested in boxing history, I encourage you to go to my favorites folder here on YouTube and to look at the slightly more than five minutes of fight tape that they have. Understand how controversial this fight was, right? The Associated Press had Ray Robinson's opponent, Georgie Abrams, winning the fight six rounds to three rounds for Robinson, with one round being a draw. Understand the UP on their scorecard had Abrams winning the fight six rounds to four over Robinson. Understand all three judges in this split decision fight had Abrams winning at least four rounds. That's four out of ten, right? Two judges gave it 
to Robinson 6-4. One judge gave it to Abrams 6-4. Here's what you need to know. According to reports, when the decision was announced and Robinson was awarded the win, the crowd of greater than 15,000 people booed. Understand, this fight was held at Madison Square Garden. Understand, back then, Madison Square Garden had savvy boxing fans attending fights at the Mecca of boxing, right? This win by then welterweight champion Sugar Ray Robinson was booed by the crowd and disagreed with by AP and UP, right? Now, let me say this. The tape of the fight is remarkable. Obviously, the tape is dodgy. Don't expect color pictures, right? Don't expect high resolution, right? Don't expect continuity. It's a little bit choppy. The guys are in the middle of the ring. Suddenly, they're over at the side of the ring. But a few things stand out here. As you see Abrams fight, and Abrams wasn't that tall. He's maybe about 5'8". You're going to notice that Abrams is a master clincher. You're going to notice that he has a lot in common with Bernard Hopkins. Right? You're going to notice that when they get in close, especially early in the tape, Abrams continually throws Ray Robinson off his game by stepping forward and clinching him. You're going to notice that Ray Robinson has blinding hand speed, and Robinson at times tries to open up on Abrams' body. But you're also going to notice that there's a part of Abrams' game where he can walk away and be out of the pocket. The point is simply the clinching bothers Robinson. This is prime Robinson. Robinson lets his hands go at times on the inside. Two-handed attack, right? Abrams' strategy seems to be to smother Sugar Ray Robinson. Now, if we were to analyze Robinson fights, and keep in mind there's not a lot of footage from Robinson during his heyday in the 1940s. Right? But if we were to analyze Robinson's fights, I would argue that it's the guys who can get inside and smother him. Jake LaMotta, Randy Turpin, Gene Fulmer. Right? It's those guys who give Ray Robinson the biggest problem. If you're analyzing a Robinson-Floyd Mayweather fight, the question really is, can Mayweather on his front foot come inside and smother Ray Robinson? It's a great question, folks. It's an excellent question because there's no question to me that from distance, Ray Robinson is simply too offensively blessed. Right? So really, you have to try to slow down Ray Robinson. Understand, too. Ray Robinson was a puncher, right? He wasn't there to win a decision, even though he won a lot of them. He was a puncher. He ended fights. Staying outside on Ray Robinson carries risk, right? So you literally have to come in and you have to try to smother him. Understand, too that George Abrams actually got suspended after this fight because he came in the fight weighing above the contracted 160 pounds. Now, one of the things with <laughs> Ray Robinson that's interesting is that he continually fought bigger guys, right? So Robinson was outweighed in this fight by more than 11 pounds. Right? It shows on the film. 
In other words, Abrams is coming inside. He's able to grab Ray Robinson. You have to ask yourself, if Abrams didn't weigh 11 more pounds than Ray Robinson, would he be able to bully Ray Robinson on the inside? So if you're looking for fascinating footage of Ray Robinson in the 1940s, and if you're looking for one of his most controversial fights, I hope you consider this fight between Sugar Ray Robinson and Georgie Adams from May the 16th, 1947. The champ gets tested. The champ gets booed after the decision was announced. He's dealing with a bigger opponent, stouter but wider opponent who is willing to come inside and try to clinch him and then hit him off the clinches. As I said, Abrams comes across a lot like Bernard Hopkins. It would have been fascinating to see prime, well, put it this way, not quite prime, but Ray Robinson at his best at middleweight against prime Bernard Hopkins at middleweight. This fight tells me that fight would have been interesting. Give the tape a look and leave your comments here in the comment section to this video. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for stopping by.